at the age of 17, uh, they didn't even question his age and just said, all right, sign on the dotted line, hold the Bible, and, and that was it. Uh, he went back to my dear old nan and walked into the kitchen and threw his slouch hat on the table, and my nan said, oh, my little Herbie, what have you done? And he said, I'm off. He said, I'm going off to fight the war. So that's what he did. Before his 18th birthday, he was in the Middle East, and he took along his little box brownie camera and um, started off from there. Dad did a lot of this photography clandestine and uh, no one really knew about it and um, he was very, uh, it was a covert operation but, uh, but years after his particular unit commander said to him if you hadn't taken those photos we'd have no history of our particular unit in those areas of action where we were. I think he was very cunning, I just think uh, Dad had that sixth sense about him, he was a very, um, I guess, hist historically he always thought about uh, things that were happening around him and that's initially why he took the camera and um, he just had a real eye for photography and with that he um, just I think made the most of the moment and I just think he was just very very clever the way he did it. I think he just obviously had it in his trouser and being a, a box brownie camera it folded up fairly neatly um, and I think he really chose his moments to do it. Initially, um, because he couldn't obviously take the film with him, and God knows how he hid the camera in the first place, but um, my dad's mother, my dear old grandmother, used to send him the film and um, would send cakes, as they often did, most probably mothers did that. And uh, she used to auger out a hole in the bottom of the cake and real Hogan's Heroes sort of thing and put the film in and then plug the hole back up so she'd send it over. I've looked at them over many, many years and uh, as I've watched or looked through them, I've thought to myself, as much as they might be uh, 40, 50, 60 years, years old or up to 70 as they are now, at that time they were taken in real time. And I think when you see these photos, that what you're looking at is an actual, the event was happening at that particular time when Dad was taking it, whether it be the mates um, doing handstands, uh, the shells laying on the ground from when they've been into battle or setting up the guns. Uh, I think it's, at that time, it was, it was then and there, and I think that's the significance of the photos. I actually found them one day in Dad's drawer in the, the roll top desk, and I said to Dad, I said, mate, you need to do something about this. I said, this is very valuable. I said, uh, once you're gone, I've got nothing except a pile of old photographs and a box brownie camera, and I said, would you, you know, sit down when you've got time, uh, your own leisure, just catalogue them. And he said, yeah, you're right. He said, I need to do this. And so he did over several weeks, uh, just sat in the lounge room at home and just went through them. But I'll never forget the day when we pulled the bag out and he started to look at the photos and I said uh, to Dad, where was this one taken? He'd go, oh, that was Boona Falls in New Guinea. And I said, where was this one? He'd go, uh, Balak Papan. And I said, where's that? And he said, oh, that's in Moresby. And I said, how do you know that? And he said, I just know. Uh, his memory was unbelievable and he went through those and he wrote on everyone individually. He even knew um, 95 or 98% of the men that he took the photos of after all those years. Every guy that went away had a story to tell and regardless of what his role was or or the like, he had uh, he went to war, he put his life on the line and that's why I think it's very important that they should be put somewhere uh, where people can appreciate them.